horror movies. Come on down now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. What's up? This Hello. is Insanity. Right off the bing bong. Welcome to Insanity and welcome to Cinema Cinematic Shuffling. Let me get that hype up over there. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. How's it going, everybody? Uh, this is Cinematic Survey. I'm Jason, and that is Clay Tanic. How y'all doing? Hey, guys, if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast, you can't see anything right now, of course, but uh, we are like decked out. We're wearing ruby slippers golden dresses and a uh, huge hair uh our hair is spiked up it's 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 truly insane and for you guys who are watching on youtube well you know we're practically full of shit but <laughs> that being said uh, guys we we, we, we we what's been going on we, we the last thing we put up was our frogman a review and it seems like forever ago i missed you i missed talking to you buddy and i missed uh our audience um it's good to be back with y'all it's been a minute no real reason it's just uh life is uh life takes a minute so life we're back we're back yeah. for a little bit here uh, uh sorry i'm just trying to make sure my stupid phone camera is mine right is, right. this is as good as it gets everybody <laughs> I, i'm fresh from the barber though i did that for you and for the uh viewing audience well, it looks good I, I like the uh oh would you have kind of like the uh, hitler youth going on back there? no well, not, in, <laughs> not intentionally but here look at the top can you see the top uh it's not in the camera i can see your neck though i saw your neck you only saw the neck. Hold on, let me see if I can do okay. this. You okay. Yes, I, I see the top. I see the top. Oh, it's a, it's diff very different story. So, <laughs> well, it looks good. Uh, it, uh, we'll have to call you um, a monk soon. Yeah. <laughs> Friar Clay. Is Friar what Clay, I would be known as in these streets. <laughs> Clay, how the hell are you? What you been up to, man? I'm good, man. How are you? How are you? Good. Good. Uh, we just. Uh, doing some crazy shit around here we we've been vending events uh, we nice. vended we vended this uh, event in case anyone doesn't know my wife and I run this uh, other side hustle called damage case goods if you want to look that up on Instagram we have a store up we basically make like plaques and resin epoxy plaques we sell shirts and stuff and so we go vend these events so we went to this event in LA called Blasphemy and blasphemy is a, a vendor vendor space. It's kind of like this dodgy downtown area. It's kind of speakeasy where you have to have nice. like the the right uh, directions to get to it. But it's a very cool. all all inclusive, um, LGBTQ uh, trans friendly community. Along with they had like uh, there was drag queens, but they weren't the typical drag queens. In blasphemy manner, they're dressed up in monstrous cool Co costumes and stuff like that and so they were doing their their whole thing which is really cool met a lot of it. yeah so we met a, always meet a lot of great people at these events uh blasphemy tell like every like every six months or so still so probably be another one in november but uh, we always have fun we're always like you said all we, we always find cool new things there's great individual artists out there crafting their own designs and uh, artists who, who make prints and sell great uh horror related and other psycho weirdo art so it's it's really kind of a cool place i i love that kind of stuff and i like uh going on to social media to see your photos of your <laughs> little um kiosk it's it's awesome it's like a uh heavy metal weirdo swap meet and i say that in the <laughs> kindest way it looks it looks like a lot of fun and um i look forward to going i attend similar events here but they aren't uh they, they they're different but yeah i get all of the art on my walls is for the most part is from these kind of events. Yeah. So I, I love that y'all are doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we, all our artwork, well, yeah, these, these flags are bought from local, local vendors behind me. Of course it's, you know, nice. it's not their original work, but it, it's bought from local vendors and, you know, out in our main house, we have um, a bunch of artwork that we've purchased from great artists all over the place. Cool. So, yeah. I still have your comics too. Uh, nice encased and uh uh awesome and the eight the old h boys yeah 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 throw throw them at people uh throw them at, at the right person you'll know them <laughs> when you see them uh usually they're uh you know about three days sober you know <laughs> really having a tough time that's yeah. my audience 
but the, yeah, so that's that's what we've done. We've done this uh, this weekend and next weekend. We're heading to Ventura, which is about a cool. two two and a half hour drive north from here, and we're going to vend this erotic bondage oh. art event. So it's going to be very Dude, in your I face can't... sexual. <laughs> Have I shown you any of the um, pages that I'm working on from the uh, Not Safe for Work comic book that I've been doing? The, the only thing I've seen is the things you've posted either on Facebook or Instagram. Oh, and that's the tamest stuff. Like, and yeah. I'm not trying to, to steal valor or anything, but it's just <laughs> kind of like, it's a, you know, Oh, I'm doing that also kind of moment. Yeah, no, it'd be great. Oh, you know, it'd be really rad. And this is kind of, uh, this isn't part of the, uh, the podcast or anything, but maybe if you could like draw or give us a print of something that you've done maybe we can put that on plaques and oh cool and we can do work out some kind of deal you know you oh you shit get, man yeah. yeah hell yeah you know give me some dimensions and i'll uh i'll i'll mock up something and we'll 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 start making that money that hell underground yeah. money cash is king <laughs> baby when you come up to, when you come up to the table if you don't if you ain't uh, rocking that cash just keep it on roll Guys, we we need the cash. You need to come in and buy stuff and upload. Look at the videos because we really need to afford the fentanyl that's going. Or not the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I meant the, the the cocaine that we're using needs oh, to be tested. Oh for yes, yeah. And that costs uh, a lot. YouTube. <laughs> But uh, Clay, I, I guess uh, we can head back on to track somewhat here. That so, uh, other than what we've kind of got planned, what have you seen lately that has stood out, or you know, in the horror genre, or not even horror, maybe horror sci-fi or thriller? Okay, cool, good question. I feel um, spoiled lately, honestly, when it comes to uh, entertainment. Lately, and we're. I admit we're kind of late to the party on this one, but we binged them. Is that the is that the right one? The MGM yeah. show them. We binged that. The first two seasons was friggin' epic, and uh, you know, and while being flawed, but that's always the caveat with anything that we're talking about. Like yes. we embrace the flaws, and that's, so that was a good one. So let's 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 start at them real quick because uh, sure. we're talking about we're talking about the African American family that moves into. Uh, an LA suburb or uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the wrong, uh, from, I'm, I'm so sorry. I okay, meant no from, worries. I meant from, from, uh, okay. From, yeah. The MGM show starring that one dude and that other person. And it's got a whole lively cast of people that I have not Googled yet. Uh, okay. but, uh, you know, the basic send up is that it's, um, it's a very Kingian, uh premise of you can drive into the town but you can't drive out and mm -hmm. all the people that are left in this creepy town are attacked nightly by vampire demons that can inhabit the shapes of their dead relatives and friends Whoa. and you know say let me in let me in from the window yeah and the only thing keeping them in the house is this little glyph that you put in the corner and if it falls on the floor they get in your house or if you invite them in you're dead so that's the the basic premise and uh, it goes from there they um you know have that you watched sounds, it? that no i haven't i when you said them i've only seen uh, just di diverting just a, one second here uh i i'm like three episodes into them which is on amazon prime and it's okay so far it's really rough to watch <laughs> um so Heard it, it wasn't as good as the movie which i thought was excellent after i watched it twice so. okay yeah I, I didn't even know there was a movie um but yeah the, there's a series on prime called them and it has two seasons that's why i thought you're talking about but anyways that sounds like from sounds like an amazing show actually it's right up my goddamn alley and uh, you have to like is it through prime you said it's through mgm but can it's you get through it? A, yeah you can get it via prime that's how we got it uh, okay mgm cool. plus um and you know like every other good american what we do is we uh you know binge our show <laughs> dump it and then you know go from there right and, get and that free yeah you do not let these uh jackals these these hyenas these lepers get too much of your money make sure that you cancel that subscription and that brings us to our sponsor i'm kidding we don't have <laughs> thank you amazon for your sponsorship <laughs> okay so uh that that reminds me of another one that you, you we had talked about briefly which was severance uh on severance. apple plus 
And when you mentioned that, yeah, if you had asked, if you had, you had asked if I had seen Severance, and that was the main reason I got Apple Plus in the first place was nice. to watch that show, and I binged it within my seven day free trial, and immediately canceled my subscription after that. But I, I love well, the man. show. It was oh, dude, yeah. it I, it was one of those shows that stands up to repeat, um, not viewings necessarily, but uh, repeat analysis it, via YouTube videos. People that have really kind of dug into the lore, and it's yeah. fascinating because there's they give you enough to to dig that deep into yeah yeah there was a the oh my god i i started having an existential crisis when i was watching it because i at first you think those kind of shows will do it too yeah, yeah. Uh, and just that if the writing's really well and the actors are are prime then you, you got a, a solid show on your hands and that's what this show is because at the beginning i was like oh well maybe this is kind of a it's kind of a cool concept to then the concept is i don't want to give too many spoilers away but uh, this guy goes into work and it has his his memory is wiped every time he leaves work. So he goes into work. He has his memory wiped while he's working. So he doesn't remember any of his home life. And then when he leaves work, he has his memory wiped again. So he doesn't remember just any of his work life, which is kind of this weird sci fi. I would say black mirror ish kind of concept of yeah. separate the, the total mental and physical separation of your mind from your work. I, and I imagine it's some kind of thing, some kind of a, a relieving catharsis for people so that they don't have to worry about what's happening at work. But then it starts delving into some psychological aspects about, you know, the true self and uh, who you really are. Wow. And it, yeah. It works on so many levels for me and um, horror loves to live in this space. And some of my favorite uh, horror does, it, you know, and severance, it, it, it might be uh, being a little bit liberal with the premise to call it horror, but it yeah. definitely uh, it definitely ventures in there. It, it's more comedy than horror, like the comedy helps you deal with the, the savage, uh, you know, uh, horror premises of this. But it's this this idea that this corporation that you work at doesn't you don't just work for it it embodies you it encapsulates you there's no way out of it and that that that's where the horror element works for me with seven. yeah I, I i think you're right where, where you it it does kind of do this it does this fine line but i think there's enough dread and it 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 does put you in a like i said it, it gave me anxiety as yeah. the series started ending where where you're really thinking about, you know, the horror aspect of it and would this be a good idea? And yeah, it's just, I'll, I'll, I'll let people figure that out if they see it, but. Oh, I mean, it's just, it, you know, you start off the show wondering, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> why would anybody consent to this? And then as the show progresses, it kind of delves in more into the psychology of why the, the, uh, you know, participants and severance do. It's yeah. definitely a good show. And if you're going to get an Apple subscription, uh, binge Silo after you Silo. binge uh, Severance. Okay. Silo. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I need to check out Silo too, for sure. All right. Uh, so, so anything else that was on your plate? Oh, uh, I think that we both watched uh, Baghead lately. Yep. was a movie. Uh, Shutter is kind of like the... <laughs> You know, we just have a, a perpetual uh, subscription to Shutter, and yeah, as, if you like horror movies, it's it's a it's a comforting you know one to kind of have on hand. And we both watched Baghead recently, which uh, was you know a mixed Baghead, <laughs> a mixed Baghead. And I, I remember I was telling you that I, I wanted to see, but based on like some average reviews, I wouldn't say they're glowing reviews from friends and acquaintances, but they they said, oh, I saw Baghead, it wasn't too bad. And the uh, infested is that the one the French? What's yeah, uh, infested is basically uh, uh, contemporary French hip hop culture arachnophobia is the okay. way that I'd sum up that one. So that's when I didn't get around to uh, get a chance to get around to watching, but we I did check out Baghead, and I remember while I was watching it, uh, I kind of gave you. I may have given you the false impression that it, it was giving talk to me vibes a little bit. And I only, no, meant I think that that's in accurate most, in a way. Yeah. I meant, I meant it in the most kind of general sense, not because talk to me is obviously the, a superior film in every way. Um, <laughs> but it, there were still these, these arbitrary rules that had to be followed regarding the bag head, the, the, 
this creature that could bring back your dead relatives and they could talk through this thing, but you can only do it for two minutes or. Or that the creature takes uh, control of the room and, and you no longer have any control over this frightening, uh, you know, witch ghost that you got. But um, uh, yeah, no, I think that your comparison to uh, uh, talk to me is apt mm -hmm. because both of them kind of rely on this premise that the audience and the characters are all going to accept the supernatural quality of the plot device without a whole bunch of argument. That right. I think that horror has kind of decided that. Um, I like that about it. I there were other things that that I didn't like about it. Um, you know, I yeah. but I'm I'm curious what what your takeaway was. Yeah, I mean, it, it started off promising for me because uh, again it started giving me that because the, the the atmosphere of the movie is really nice uh, it, it's 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 a centrally located movie it's in this old abandoned pub in england somewhere and it it really kind of gets that pall of being a used living environment that this girl uh, inherits from her father and i love that i love that aspect i love when horror movies really put a lot of that that effort into the background and the the sets and but there you know <laughs> when it when it started getting to the arbitrary rules of what was going on with the the bag head and then the exposition <laughs> yeah. dumps it, it was it was like okay well and that's i remember i had just texted you about uh about having the to talk to me vibes and i felt like going back and retexting you you know what uh don't get your hopes up about <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean no like i understand i think that it did have that uh intention talk to me did it way better but i i think that it's almost a, an unfair comparison in a way because talk to me was like way more excellent than it had a right to be like those yeah. the the brothers that directed that are really on to something um you know baghead had Phenomenal cinematography. The score was pretty was 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 pretty good. Um, you know, I watched uh, <laughs> Infested right after that, and the cinematography and the score of that kind of you know overshadowed uh, the first one in a way. But yeah. uh, I don't know. It's weird. D doesn't it seem like all uh, contemporary horror directors went to the s same exact school and and studied under the exact same professor <laughs> in a way and and uh, uh, color keyed their movie in the exact same way? Or this, this, there's this, uh, you know, and it's it sounds negative and because it's not. I think that it's it was competently done, but it was predictable in yes. so many ways, even visually. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, you, you nailed it on the head. I I was I was even saying that it's like it, it, there were no real twists and turns. I kind of had a feeling where it was going and usually we like to when we rag on films that we that we do <laughs> or watch these through. I I like to try to predict the outcome. And sometimes yeah. I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. I'm not going to say I'm going to uh, nail these things 100% of the time. But this one I did and I was like, "Okay, well, I saw where this was going." But yeah. at the same time there was a there's a moment when they they use a heavy use of cgi that just uh, that pulled me right out of it that was yeah. that was my biggest problem with it and it started right from the beginning now my caveat with this is that i'm glad that we're not setting actors on fire anymore because we we've, we've <laughs> injured enough people i mean poor uh you know it came hotter uh the the you know the guy that played jason was mm -hmm. burned and then went back to get set on fire again yeah. on set uh, right. so we don't need to be like people on fire anymore but i think the rule needs to be it needs to look convincing and it looks so fake and it was right in the opening yeah you know uh, the opening segment of the movie the part that's supposed to pull you in like right. uh you know it reminded me of the contemporary evil dead the one that fede alvarez did mm -hmm. but he did it so much better and it was that that was fake fire too but you 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 were a lot more convinced right yeah yeah the when we're talking about the cgi it, it, I, I just wonder because there was practical effects used for the the actor playing the bag head yeah, and I wish they just stayed that way the whole way. I, I didn't understand why they even the the jump scare that it, you see where the CGI is used, it did not make any sense. Why couldn't no. you just have her? I mean, just approach and just be an actor and use whatever prosthetics they had on her at the time, or him, whoever's playing the the part. But 
it, yeah, that just threw me off. And I was like, it felt like the ma- the movie The Mask, where yeah, Jim Carrey's eyes just pop out, his tongue lolls out, and <laughs> oh yeah, like um uh uh, uh Pee Wee's Big Adventure with um um large Marge, like, large it, Marge yeah. yeah, Tim Burton knows that you need to go overboard to be able to not you know like terrify your adolescent audience and that's they did that but it's just like we're it's a horror movie we're supposed to be scared uh yeah it, the rule of thumb for quite a while now since the uh advent of cgi and the you know affordability of it has been that if you use it in a horror movie the fans are going to hate it and we always always do if we can tell that it's cgi yeah. if it looks like a post-production effect it, we hate it and it pulls us right out of the movie and this did this right from the get-go and it continued to do it every time like it it mimicked uh movies that it couldn't approach like right. uh, poltergeist the poltergeist face scene yeah yeah most definitely uh it pulled from these influences and then just kind of ruined them in a bit so I, I i'm not gonna say the backhead was a completely horrible film that oh. you know, but it was is a middling average one that but there, there are other things that you know had me confused. Where you know, after the two minutes, the 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 demon or witch lady is supposed to take over, but they always manage to leave the basement fine, and they were always <laughs> they are always two minutes over. Yet they always manage to get out. Why didn't the witch lady follow them? Why, you know, there's a lot of whys that were happening in my head. Well, and the the movie plays with one of the mo- most well trodden premises in in horror movie dumb is the inheritance of a haunted place that's that's where it starts so you're like all right this is a very you know kind of uh, boilerplate premise and then you've got the lead character that refuses to leave even though it's violently aggressively haunted right <laughs> I, and so it, it deals with that right off the bat. So you're already <laughs> weary as a horror fan a little bit. It sounds like we hate this way more than we did. I genuinely had a good time. I mean, yeah. if, if you, it, which this sounds, I know we always sound ironic and contradictory in that way. I, if somebody said, do you want to, like, I want to see a, a horror movie that's not too scary. What do you got? I'd tell them like, okay, watch this one. At least you're not going to hate me for it. It's not going to get all deep in your uh, subconscious. Yeah, there's some there's some cool there now let's 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 kind of rag on a little bit and there's some things I could probably still rag on it story wise but the 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 cool things the cool aspects of it were maybe the was was the the actual background of the backhead herself yeah and, I like that and even though it was it was a big exposition dump you know they there was a the way they told it was like oh, okay this is what it is I would have loved to see if they were at a bigger budget some kind of flashback to what was actually happening how baghead became baghead you know and but i know i i realized the the budget was uh, pretty low and they couldn't go that far so we couldn't actually see what happened to her only it was only described so that i thought that was cool so we have a background we have a a, a monster that's kind of fleshed out uh unlike <coughs> what's that clown <laughs> You know, I've, I've never watched that that all the way through. But anyway, <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so I like that they took the time to at least flesh out the the monster in the flake, and also the way it, it got the memories from from the dead people, so it could like absorb or pull their soul into its body, so they could talk to their loved one for for their two minutes. Um, yeah, uh, it ingested whatever piece whatever piece of heirloom that they had uh, of the dead person. Like uh, the, when the guy brings in a, a wedding ring, and, but when the baghead eats it, it's his mother. And he's like, Oh it was shit. Passed down. Yeah. It was passed he, down. He, yeah. So the actual ring was his mother's ring. So that's who the spirit, that's the spirit that appeared. So I, I like that aspect of it too. Cause I was even wondering about that. Cause it looked like an old ring. I was like, is it going to bring, his fiance or wife back or so. well i mean and to your original point about the predictability of it you know and spoilers whatever i mean you, you're the whatever uh but um you know like it, it was obvious from the get-go that this guy wasn't telling the whole story yeah and the thing that he was hiding was the thing that i said out loud too so you know i don't <laughs> 
I, it was, it, it, it's, it's one of those things where it felt like the motivation of the guy just wasn't enough. Yeah. I mean, I I know that again, we are, we may be heading spoiler territory here, but I, I know infidelity is, <laughs> is, uh, is, is shitty. Um, but the way this guy, cause that's what it was basically boiled down to, isn't it? Yeah. He pretty much like she was getting ready to leave him and he wanted to know why it's like, why would you want to be? Uh, yeah. Oh my God. Whatever. I, you know, and it, it wasn't just a problem with him. It was a problem with the protagonist. Like what compels her to stay in this horrible environment? I know she's poor. Okay. The setup is she's poor and she yeah. needs money, but it's like $2,000 to talk to a violent ghost. And you also have to contend with the overhead of running a bar. That sounds like a, a <laughs> Two thousand dollars is not that much money. <laughs> yeah, I, I, for, I, there's two things though. I, I I know she wasn't really running in the bar because it was closed. Uh, I right. think it was permanently closed. But there was a small moment when she's signing those documents for the deed, and it's mentioned that she can't leave because she's now physically locked or psychically locked to the house somehow. <laughs> you, you, you gotta read that legalese people it's, be yes. careful here <laughs> your and, fingers and the, are, are nitroglycerin <laughs> and the 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 guy who, who sold her you know the the what do they call the barrister they call him a counselor i think in, yeah. in england right yeah the something like that lawyer the, yeah the lawyer guy and so it, it turns out that he's somehow involved in some kind of conspiracy, a baghead conspiracy. Yeah, it was unnecessary this. plot in a plot heavy. Like it, it, it was, it was laden with plot, but it said very little. Yeah. Like it's one of these things where you say a lot of words to say a very little intellectual. Right. Yeah. And then you know, I know we get, we we're concentrating some good stuff, but now we're gonna <laughs> give back the bad stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's you know. Horror movies should never take more than an hour 30 of your time because yeah. they're probably going to drop the ball a little bit at some point. And we accept it. I mean, I think yeah. that that's one thing that we all accept as horror fans. But the one thing that, that you will make me resent you for is if you take up too much of my time in any yeah. movie that takes up like whether it's even a big budget one, like the same actress that uh, played the protagonist in this was Freya, the human Freya Allen. Yeah. yeah yeah she was in the latest uh you know planet of the apes movie which was pretty fun yeah also 15 she, minutes too long <laughs> she's also in the witcher the the first and second oh is she the witcher. Uh, yeah. which i've only watched like episode one and two of that so. yeah well you're not missing that much so but uh, <laughs> she's i mean i i, I thought she was a, a great actor i think she did a, a, a fine job i i was just kind of frustrated that her I mean, she wasn't really doing that much. It felt yeah. like things were just happening because things were happening. Um, yeah, it, it felt like it was just she was just kind of reacting to the situation at hand, and she was kind of powerless. To, power. It felt like she was just pow powerless to do anything um, because the power had just so ro ro roped her in as far as that contract and linking her to the house. That you know, uh, I mean, all the way back, uh, you know, like a. Uh, uh, the Amityville horror before was a little bit before our time, but it was still in our psyche a little bit because that was one of the first horror movies that our parents probably watched. And then you go to Poltergeist was the, uh, you know, kind of the important one that was in the zeitgeist for yeah. our generation. And then you go on to the conjuring, whatever they have now, this through line is not leaving a place that's allowing you to leave. Like <laughs> At least, at least Evil Dead. Like, yeah. There's a creek. There's nowhere else. You can either go back to the haunted cabin or you can take your chance in this. Like there's some, you know, kind of uh, overarching the, element keeping them in. Keep the them best in. part, the, the best movie. You know, I'm kind of freezing up. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Yeah. Um, it looks like, oh, there I am. <laughs> and now I'm like out of sync. Okay. So don't mind the out of sync that's going on here. Looks yeah. fine on my end. But oh, it looks we'll fine. See. Okay, okay. Yeah. On my end, it looks like uh, I'm going crazy here. So, but oh, okay. you, you bring up a, you bring up a great point about you know the you can leave aspect. Now, the the movies that that choose to leave, and then the forces that make them stay are some of my favorites. When I think of that, yeah. I think of Event Horizon. Um, yeah, they get on this. They this salvage crew goes out, finds the Event Horizon, goes in, sees all things all fucked up. The uh, 
uh, who's the who's the captain uh, lawrence fishburne yeah he, yeah. Uh, he watches this video playback of this intense say, orgy of flesh and Violence. blood Ugh. and he goes we're leaving like that yeah and, we're uh, we're leaving <laughs> And I love that because any person in their rational mind would say the same thing. I'm not inspecting this. We can just like Ripley uh, in Alien says, w let's nuke it from orbit, you know? Yeah. Like uh, our intention should be to leave. And um, $2,000 was the impetus for <laughs> for our protagonist to stay in this waking nightmare. Um, I, I, I always like to see this. If I was thrust in a situation when if, if I knew something was – living in my i don't have a basement but if was something was living in my my dryer <laughs> right, every right. time i open my dryer it's this haunting thing that would come out and crawls i'd be like there's a damn oh, goblin in there he's covered the fuck in out of here. sheets <laughs> i i would not stay here i'd gather the cats gather my my partner and we leave and just sell everything <laughs> yeah like i why are you selling this place for twelve hundred dollars like i just <laughs> just take it just take it <laughs> no it, it, but it, the movies that that you know because you know obviously there's not going to be a movie if they just leave but yeah, I will say yeah that would be a great skit or something you know where it's just like we're leaving the end no well, rough. I mean, <laughs> like it, 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 it would probably be a much uh, more interesting plot progression if the, uh, you know, if we're drip fed the occult stuff, the yeah. beyond stuff, but instead it's just all right in front, which I, I know that was an intentional narrative choice that they made, but it's like, all right, but you've, you know, you've, <laughs> you've slapped your genitals on the table. This is everything that you've got. It's good. It's all writing on the bag head now and you're going to fuck it up right. at some point <laughs> a little bit. Oh my God. Well, I, I, I think we've expounded <laughs> on bag head enough. I don't even think the, the commenters or reviewers of other YouTube channels have uh, expounded on this movie as much as we have. No, not, not even close. Not even close. Uh, but it was uh, directed by Alberto Corridor and stars Freya Allen, Jeremy Irvine, and Ruby Barker. If you want to see Baghead, it is streaming on Shutter, and yeah, so. you, and you should see it. Like, the, the, yeah. <laughs> even though we just spent thirty plus minutes crapping on it, you should see it because it was it was it was fun and it delivered in some ways. But you know, I, you know what I would love. Yeah, what's I that? would love that people see the film. I want people to see the film, and yeah. then if they disagree with us full, you know, wholeheartedly, I want them to say that in the comments or write us an email or something. Please. Just saying, you guys are fucking stupid. This movie ruled, and here's why. And you you list out those bullet points, and I would be happy to read all those comments for sure. I would and love then totally, it, yeah. yeah, and totally disagree and rip it apart on how you're wrong, but. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's really I would I, I would like that too, but <laughs> no obligation, obviously. Guys, if you made it this far, thank you so much. Uh, this has been another episode of Bits and Chunks. We just kind of shoot the shit, maybe talk about movies that we've seen or and things that we've done and over the weeks. And that's about it for this episode. Uh, hopefully we'll be back uh, maybe next week, if not next week, the week after next to give you another killer movie breakdown, watch through and review so yeah yeah we'll be back soon we appreciate it y'all thanks for tuning in all right later peace <laughs>